Recently, Riot Games announced that they finally have a name for their fighting game, being 2XKO. That is a stupid name and I hate it. Along with news that they're going to be giving us more information over the course of this year. With this big info dump and promise of news, there is one question on everyone's mind. Do you think the Cannon Brothers casually swap their names back and forth to see if you notice? Uh, also, who's going to be in the 2XKO roster at launch? So I decided I should throw my hat into the ring and figure out which characters should be in 2XKO. I've not got the most League of Legends experience, but I've played too many fighting games. So today, I hope to give you the best roster I could come up with while trying to keep the characters true to their League of Legends counterparts. So let us be about it. Let's talk about who should be in 2XKO. I hate that name. Before we dive straight into the list, we need to figure out how big our roster is going to be. While in an ideal world, I would just throw every League of Legends champion into the game in order to simultaneously please and anger both the FGC and Riot fan bases, thus escalating me to my rightful throne of King of Dumbass, we can't just do that. Instead, we need to figure out how many characters are likely to be in the base roster. By doing some high-end intense, super deep investigation, I was able to come up with the number of 15 total base characters. How did I do this? If you go to the game's website on your mobile phone, there's 15 slots for the characters. So... So now we have our base number, we need to find out how many slots we have left to fill. Obviously, Echo, Ari, Darius, and Yasuo are all already taken, with Alawi also being confirmed. That's five slots already. We've also seen development footage of Jinx and Katarina, and while these were a long, long time ago at this point, it would be stupid to imagine that they just threw away these characters for the base game. So they're both going in. That's seven characters now, leaving us with nine slots. Wait. Fuck, I did my math wrong. Uh, congratulations, everyone. A new, a new installment comment. 15 is actually the number 16. So we now have, we now have nine slots remaining. I definitely didn't miscount and make the entire script. Now, just a heads up. These are my picks and characters that I think would be cool. The likelihood is you don't agree with me, and that's a good thing. I'm going to explain my vision so that you understand where I'm coming from, but if you don't get it, then that's okay. You don't need to get it. If you disagree, let me know in a civil and respectable manner like the great person you are, and maybe even suggest your own character in the comments below. Unless you suggest Shaco, then you're banned from my next birthday party. All right. How about we start with a no-brainer? Fighting game characters can generally be shoved into different categories based on how they play. These are known as archetypes, and if you want to learn a bunch about them, you can go watch this video here. It's pretty good, it's pretty fun. Not right now. Okay, you know, that's fine. I get it. It'll be in the end card too. You know, it's, it's fine. It's whatever. In case you didn't want to watch that video for some reason or need a refresher, archetypes are ways to identify characters based on the type of moves that they have. If we look at Echo, we can see that he has very fast movement, a heavy reliance on mix-ups and positioning, and a slow projectile that is mostly used for combo extension and setups. We can pretty safely say that he is a rushdown character, a character that is focused on getting in on you, mixing you up heavily, and doing a big amount of damage because of it. In fact, most of the characters from a glance look like they're going to be some form of rushdown characters. Darius and Alawi look like they're going to be more of big body bruisers, but we're missing some vital character archetypes in the roster. While I would love a fighting game to be filled with nothing but rushdown characters, at some point, we're gonna have to add some zoners, and of course, at some point, we're gonna have to add some grapplers to the mix. Now, I wonder which League of Legends character would make a good grappler? It's set, it's set, it's fucking set. Of course it's set. Why would it not be set? Let's break down the logic. Set's ultimate is big grab. Grappler use grabs. Set is grappler. But there's a few more things to the character than that, like, come on. Set's main mechanic in League, aside from the Grand Slam, 
is that when he takes damage, he stores it in his gauge that replaces his mana. When he uses his W, he then cashes out all of that grit and gives himself a shield based on the amount that he had. This causes the W to also do more damage. Characters having mechanics in which they deal more damage because they took a bunch of damage isn't unheard of in fighting games. And combat characters have existed for years at this point. Having a mechanic similar to this where he's able to buff himself based on the damage he's recently taken, or even a simpler install state on low HP is definitely viable and something that would 100% fit the character. We can even mix in some moves that cause him to expend his own HP so that he gets his boost in power quicker. You know, he's a pit fire in the law. He's a little bit of a silly guy. Having him bust his own nose to get a power boost isn't something that's out of character for him. I mean, look at him. He'd 100% smack himself in the face. There's also his E, which pulls enemies into him and stuns them if he hits a target on either side. I don't know if adding this directly would be a good idea, but a move that pulls the opponent closer to you would make a lot of sense for the character and could make his command grab game even scarier. Plus, 2x KO could be a good way to have him show off more of his combat skills. He could work as a dedicated grappler or a combo grappler, and I wouldn't really mind either way, but he is built for this game. Like, look at him! He'd 100% smack himself in the face. This is a no-brainer choice. But do you know what's not a no-brainer choice? More. The big body character is a type of character that comes in multiple different variations. You obviously have your big body grapplers who use their overwhelming might to throw the fuck out of you. But what about the dedicated big body? The slow as fuck character that uses massive hitting attacks to oppress the fuck fuck out of their opponents and make them wish they never played the game. Darius looks like he's going down that line, but I want to raise you a character that can do it in a more unique and interesting way. Everybody, meet Mordekaiser, the Mountain Man. They call him that because he's fucking huge. Mordekaiser seems like the perfect character for the big, slow, hard-hitting big body in the roster. We obviously have a couple of these, but I think Mordecai should be a step above. Yeah. Darius is a big body, but Mordecai is a big body. And his kit allows for unique mechanics, which can work very well in a tag game. Canonically, this dude is the size of a castle. So because of that, not only is he going to be big, he is gonna be pretty fucking slow. This could be seen as a downside when we have characters like Echo wave dashing about like it's going out of style. But this is just a trade off for big ass normals and most importantly, big ass damage. I'd want Mordekaiser to be absolutely terrifying to fight against, and he'd do this by controlling the battlefield in unique ways. In League of Legends, his E drags his opponents closer towards him, generally so that he can set up for a slam with his Q. In 2x KO, this could be used to adjust the opponent's position around the screen, thus making up for his weak movement options. This is an unheard of in fighting games, and has even been put in sensible fighting games, like Grand Blue Fantasy vs. Rising, a game that is known for being a true ground-based footsies fighting game. But for real, being able to deal high damage and manipulate your opponent's movement at the cost of cosplaying as a statue could be really fun, if you're into that. But that's not the big thing for me, no 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 no. I want to look towards Mordekaiser's ultimate in order to get something really unique out of this character. In League, Mordekaiser is able to press R on an opponent and cause them to enter the Shadow Dimension, a one-on-one -on -one arena in which Mord and his opponent have to fight until one of them dies or until the effect wears off. You can see where I'm going with this, right? I think Mordekaiser should have the ability to disable assist calls for a certain amount of time. And while I would love this to happen on every knockdown, this might be something that developers would have to think about a little bit. But you see the logic, right? How do we make this character scary? Well, we have them forcefully remove options from you. It is you versus him. There is no way about it. You can't get out and you're gonna have to face this thing if you like it or not. I don't know, maybe it would be broken, but it sounds so cool and let's be real. Look at this guy. He's absolutely sick. I just want to 
fucking fight him! Like, come on, Riot! In a team-based game, it makes sense that several of the characters have dynamics with each other. We've already seen characters who are linked to each other in some way pop up on the roster. And it was heavily implied in the Ruin King that Ari and Yasuo were going to become an item. Probably Rune Ends Hurricane, I'm not sure though. Might be Bork, honestly, they could turn into Bork. Because of this, I think adding characters that have dynamics with the already existing cast would be a good idea, as it gives the developers more opportunities to flesh out these characters and have them interact in different ways. So that's the excuse I'm using for slapping Riven on the list. Riven and Yasuo have a complicated history and backstory. So complicated, I didn't bother learning it for this video, but there's a lot of it, trust me. So seeing them being able to fight against each other, or better yet, fight on the same team, sounds pretty fucking cool. Plus, a fully playable version of Arcade Riven would sell like hotcakes in this game among other skins. In terms of League of Legends, Riven is a pretty complex character, having a mechanic where her auto attacks become empowered every time that she does an ability. She also has a move that hits three separate times, each with a different activation and a different attack. I can hear fighting game players pogging in the background. Despite being able to be a Wrecker character, having a buff her attacks up after every ability would be a very cool mechanic and could lead to a lot of complex combos reminiscent to the ones that are in League of Legends. Not to mention she has several unique movement options in this game. Obviously she has her dash, but I'm more interested in the flip. I've been known to be very normal about characters who have flippy dippy moves and have never had emotional breakdowns over them nerfing any of these moves. <laughs> For my mental sanity, having a flippy dippy move would be really nice. Her ultimate gives us an opportunity to add one of fighting games most loved mechanics as well. I'm of course talking about INSTALL! Spend a bit of super meter, get longer range, more damage, and most importantly, a bigger sword. Along with Ride the Fire playing in the background. Yes! 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 I really like installs, what can I say? I'm sure there's a lot more you can do to fulfill her character fantasy. Probably more records. But it feels like she could be a great addition to the cast. Oh man, I wonder what the number four could represent. I wonder. I really wonder. If we go back to our archetypes earlier, which I somehow just avoided talking about for two entire sections of the video, there is a major archetype we have yet to fill out. And while I believe the world would be a much better place without them, and the game would be destined to succeed, for the sake of appeasing the masses, we have to add a zona. I know, I know, but sacrifices have to be made for the sake of fairness. Personally, I think this is bullshit, but whatever. So which character out of the cast could be a Zona representative? There's too many. Honestly, there's just too many. There's just too many. Well, okay, we can narrow it down to two types of characters. Mages and Marksmen. Granted, not all mages and not all marksmen are cringe, but a lot of them are slow, squishy, and either have a large amount of burst or good sustain damage. If we take these key features and apply them to fighting games, the archetype that mostly fits being slow, squishy, and having good sustain damage would be a Zona. So we have a wide pool of characters to pick from in order to fill out the Zona archetype. I wonder which one we should take. <laughs> ah, Jin. Look, guys, it's Jin, the funny foreman. He's gonna go down to the mines because apparently they need a new foreman. Is it sunny on the weekend? He's busting out the George Foreman. Ask him if he wants to play a board game and he'll say, you know, I'm a pretty big connect foreman. Jin is one of the weirdest and most loved marksmen in the game. He's got a couple of things that would translate over to fighting games very well, in my opinion. The most obvious unique gameplay element he would add are traps. In League, these little guys stay on the ground, and when you walk over them, they activate, slow you, and eventually deal damage, as well as setting up for a potential route from Jin. 
I mean, I hate League of Legends, what? Traps are not something that are unheard of in fighting games. In fact, a lot of anime games have in-depth trap characters that interact with the traps in crazy and unique ways. We could expand on this part of Jin and give him multiple different kind of traps that his opponents can run into that mess them up in different ways. Oh, but what kind of traps are you thinking of, Gecko? Uh... Anyway, there's another big thing about Jin's kit which we should figure out, and how they would translate that into a fighting game. I'm not sure if you've noticed, it's kind of a subtle part of his character, but this guy really likes the number four. Like, he has a four hit passive, his bouncer grenade hits a maximum of four times, his ult has four shots, and his favorite spot is the one where he gets to scream the word four a lot. Connect 4. The number 4 is literally engraved into Jin's DNA. It's quite a serious medical condition. And it's the most well-known thing about the character. So how do we put this integral part of the character into the game in a faithful way? Well, I suggest we attach it to the combo counter. The game looks like it's going to have an in-depth and expressive combo system. And by that, I mean combos are going to be long, with multiple chances of resets. See, if you stick around the community long enough, even you can learn to decipher vague buzzwords. I think it would be a good idea for Jin to get some sort of buff or added effect if he ends a combo on a multiple of four. This could be something simple like a bonus bit of meter, a speed boost not unlike his passive, or added damage to his final attack. Alternatively, you could go really crazy, and you could have some sort of counter that tracks the amount of combos that end in the multiple of four. And when he has four successful combos that end in the multiple of four, he gets a massive buff giving him more damage and more dangerous properties on his attacks. If you think this sounds stupid, all I have to say to you is Junpei Iori Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Jin is a complicated character by League of Legends standards, and thus has a lot of opportunities for him to be fleshed out in a fighting game setting. I unironically think that you can make him one of the most interesting characters and coolest zoners in a fighting game, if you put the right amount of work in. And I hate zoners, so you know it's gonna be good. Hey, is it alright if I put my mixtape on for the rest of this section? It, don't worry about it, it'll make sense when you hear it. It's no secret that the development team have a large amount of respect for Marvel vs. Capcom. Having literal ex-MVC pros on the development team alongside community leaders who have heavily featured Marvel vs. Capcom at their events, it would be ridiculous to imagine that this game is not at least inspired by Marvel vs. Capcom in some way. Of course, this means that they're gonna take things that they like from Marvel vs. Capcom, as well as other versus games, but let's be real, it's mostly Marvel. So if you're gonna be taking things from Marvel, I have a request. Dante, Dante, put Dante in the game. Dante is cool. I like Dante. You like Dante. If you don't like Dante, I don't like you. Get out. After leaving a like on the video, subscribing and commenting, bye bye Gecko, I love you, of course. Being one of the most loaded characters in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Dante has established himself as an icon in video games and especially in the Marvel vs. Capcom scene. But we can't just put Dante in this game. It's a Riot game after all. We need a Riot character who works like Dante has the potential to be a Dante, and could fill the role that is basically just Dante. Oh, hey, Samira. Style meter. Yeah, we're not fucking around in this part. Samira is kind of a simple character in League, but she has the potential to do something that I've always wanted in a fighting game. The style meter in character action games is a way for the player to tell how well they're doing and have their brain release endorphins like, oh yeah, I am fucking sick, aren't I? In League, Samira's style system is a way to unlock her ultimate ability. I think in 2XKO, this can be taken further, and I believe it can be mixed with the character action system of style go up, feel good. This combination of mechanics could be used to create a fighting game character that I have had stored in my brain since before I started this channel. Now hear me out, what if we unlocked different special moves with every ranker? Eh? Eh? You get a D rank, 
boom, that's your fireball. Get a C rank, that's your DP. Get a B rank, that's a unique movement option. Get an A rank, that's a way to delete projectiles. Get an S rank, you get our ultimate. This is unironically my dream fighting game mechanic. And Riot has the perfect opportunity to put it in their game. So do it. Do it, Riot. Pussies. All this archetype talk, interesting kits, and translating characters from their base form into a fighting game character is kind of tiring, isn't it? Like, I've already said 4,000 words, Jesus Christ. We need to have a quick de-stressor. An easy one. A simple character. You ever just want to punch something really hard? Vi is one of the most popular characters in the entirety of League of Legends. Thanks to Arcane, her popularity has skyrocketed from the pink-haired girl from League of Legends that punches hard to that pink-haired girl from Arcane that punches hard. Sometimes you just need a straightforward character that cuts through the noise. So what makes Vi unique compared to the rest of the cast? She punches you. Hard. Well, okay, we can have it be a bit more in-depth than that. Vi has a big punch that sends her across the screen, a move that reduces the opponent's armor after several hits, and an empowered punch that sends a shockwave. Oh, she also has a big-ass grab. This simple kit could actually translate well into a combo grappler archetype, using her big grab and far advancing attacks to close the gap and deal a stupid amount of damage when she actually gets in. She could even give the opponent a debuff that causes them to take more damage. Vi would make for an amazing brawler character. Someone who just wants to get in and scrap with you for the entire match. Maybe she could have really strong pressure sequences with her attack enhancers or with her command grab-like move in order to make you scared to do literally anything. Please, come on, are you really gonna give up the chance to put Vi and Jinx in the game. Are you really gonna miss the chance to put the two main arcane characters in your game? We pretend that Jace does not exist in this timeline. This is gonna give us some fun interactions with Jinx and Vi being on the same team or going against each other, which you know you want because it's cool and players love that shit. In synopsis, she punches hard. Puppet characters are one of the most interesting type of fighting game characters, being characters that require you to control multiple different entities on the screen. Probably the most well-known puppet character is Zato. Well, I say probably, the likelihood is they're the one that you know. It's a Gilly Gear channel after all. However, in Tag Fighters, puppet characters aren't exactly very common. Like, you already have a team of characters. Why would you need an extra character to control and hit the opponent with? A puppet character could be an interesting addition to a versus game, though. So which character in the cast would work as two independent entities working together? Well, we have two perfect candidates for the role. And while I would love to slap Kled and Skarl into the game, I think that Wolf and Lamb, more commonly known as Kindred, would work much better as a dedicated puppet character. In League of Legends, you can suggest to Wolf areas to go to, and he will attack enemies in that general vicinity. The idea of having full control of Lamb and only partial control of Wolf would work really well as a puppet character. Lamb would work like any general fighting game character, probably having a zoning type playstyle thanks to their bow and arrow, but at any point, you're able to summon Wolf and have them attack based on the moves that you do. Kindred's kit is not the easiest to translate into a fighting game, but generally Lamb's moves has them shooting the opponent with their bow, and Wolf's moves have them dashing to the opponent to melee them with a bite. Puppet characters are generally not very tanky. In fact, most of the time they'll have a less health than average compared to the rest of the cast. This combined with Wolf needing to be close to the opponent and Lamb needing to be away could lead to a very interesting puppet character, which needs to control space very carefully. You know what this cast is missing, right? A villain. Yeah, we have Darius, but Riot's been doing some both side shit with Noxus and Demacia. In fact, with the way that the lore is going, I genuinely think that Kindred is the most morally correct character on this list. Well, maybe aside from like Echo, he's never actually done anything wrong. We love Echo. No, I mean, we need a 
big villain. One that everybody in the game has a reason to oppose. Villains in fighting games are a great way to flesh out your entire cast, as they give everyone there a reason to fight, either against them or for them. And if they don't, then the developers have to come up with their own reasons for fighting. In most good stories, the antagonists push the action to happen. And in fighting games, that's no different. So, which character would push most of these characters into some form of conflict? This twink. Viego is kind of weird. He's a little bit quirky, you know? He's a little bit fucked up. A little bit of a freak. A little bit of a weirdo, if you would. While he does have a fully fleshed out kit, Sometimes his anxiety takes over and forces him to become someone he's really not, also known as body swapping. And while I think the idea of completely taking over an opponent's character is something that should be safe for Captain Ginyu of the Ginyu Force, there is an archetype that Viego fits in that would work for a villain. Ladies, gentlemen, those who fall between and those who reject labels completely, step right up and see the magical composite character. Simply do your best British impression and steal one of the opponent's moves and use it against them. It's yours now! I know that there are several characters that could use this ability. Okay, just Silas. But the idea of having a composite character who is able to take several parts of a character's kit would be really fun. Maybe he could do like a double thing where when he uses a move, he morphs into the opponent's character for a while. You know, save on that animation budget. Before we get to the final character in the list, I would just like to take a moment to respect the fallen characters who didn't make it here. Oh, right, well, this calms every League of Legends player down. We need to talk about the final character that we're adding to the roster. A character so important to League of Legends that not having him would class as a war crime. He needs to be in this game. He has to be in this game. If he isn't, the game will crash and burn and crash again and burn some more and somehow have a third crash before eventually, you guessed it, burning some more. Character so impactful, so important that the gods themselves would call Come down to correct this mistake by smiting the entire games industry into oblivion! Of course, I am talking about the one, the only... Nah, you cannot convince me that he is not deserving of a spot in this game. If you hate Nah, fuck you. He deserves to get in this game. That was rude. I am not sorry. What's my reasoning? I mean, just look at him, he's just a little guy! Nah is my favorite champion in League of Legends, and I can't bring myself to hate this little guy. Being a ranged top laner half of the time and a tank the other half, Nah has the most engaging game plan in League of Legends for me. Bully my opponent, win lane, look at the rest of the map, get confused on how everyone lost, FF15. Nah's main mechanic is his transformation mechanic. Oh, well, his rage, in which he turns into a massive monster after he attacks his opponent enough. When he's in rage, he changes from an annoying ranged character to an annoying tank, who has the ability to literally slam you and everyone you love into the closest wall. He's very fun. I like Nam. But why should he be in 2XKO? Three words. Stance, Zona, Grappler. From my knowledge, there isn't a stance character that manages to switch between grappling and zoning. Maybe there is one in like Killer Instinct, but I haven't played that game. Having a character that excels at zoning the opponent out and then is forced to switch it up to literally the exact opposite playstyle sounds like one of the most fun ideas in a fighting game. And the fact that I've never seen it done in a game feels criminal. Nah fits this weird niche perfectly thanks to the way that his character is designed. You zone him out, you get pissed, you jump in for a big command grab. It's it's perfect! Like, come on, Ryan! Put him in the game! Put him in the game! Put him in the game! And that is my ideal roster for 2XKO. Wait, but there was no, like, Damasians or Void Sense. You technically didn't even have a Yordle in there. Like, this is just fucking Ionians and Noxians and a couple of Bilgewater. There was two Shadow Isle characters. Like, what are you doing? Shut up. I know that not everyone is going to agree with this list, especially because this doesn't have a wide representation of the entire world of Rune Terror. But from my perspective, these are the most interesting characters that we could get in a fighting game gameplay wise. But what about you? What do you think? Let me know your list in the comments. I hope that Riot takes a couple of these ideas and goes, ah, shit, fuck, we should have done that, and eventually they get put in the game. But as long as Nah gets put in the game as base roster, I'll be happy. And if he's not, I won't show up about it for months, so put him in the game. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you all 
next week. Anyway, a very special thanks to 64 MHz, almost that time, Ben from Canada, Savantis de Leon, Daniel Wiederich, Edison Luttery, Fexo, Games.png, I am Nauto, It's Riley, Knife and Spoon, Pretty Cat, MP04, Mr. Clen, Ray W, Sergeant Cubby, Super, Forcon, Tom Tank, Velvet Puppy, Volta, and Zandatsu for being tier 2 patron supporters.